So this presentation is going to be a little different. It, it's not going to be about the patient journey. It's not going to be about data and analytics. It's not going to be um, about branding, per se. It's, it's about the most important thing in this room, and that's all of you. So as an example, you know, this is a topic that's been kicking around Springboard for a while. We had a conversation uh, about a year ago at Shishman uh, with a, a person who was trying to uh, gain the vice president of marketing position within her organization. It was open. The organization was pretty clear that they were going to go outside for this candidate. And she said, you know what? I can do that job. I know I can do that job. I want that job. So if you guys can help me win the C-suite, I think I can win this job. So we did, of course. Uh, why not? And did a little mentoring. Met with her a couple of times. And uh, formed a couple of strategies. And, and one that really, I think, was the one that tipped it was we suggested that she, she make an appointment and meet with the CFO. Now, the CFO of their organization was somebody that their marketing department never engaged with. Dr. No was his name. He says no to everything. So, fairly brave uh, to meet with this person. But she met with him, uh, found out what is important to him when he's making investment decisions for the organization and spending money on behalf of the organization. She proclaimed her vision for the marketing department. Um, long story short, she won him over and got the job. So these strategies are not going to be for everyone in this room. Uh, many of you are at very different stages of your career. Uh, for some, maybe these are things you can aspire to. For some, you know, maybe not all of these things are going to work within your organization, but I'm hoping everybody can take away a bit or a piece of this uh, back to their, not so much organizations, but really sort of internally first, and then to your organizations. So, we already did this on my, and this is Springboard, we're in Arlington Heights. Um, it, it has been fun. I mean, I think the... The thing that we've really enjoyed is we do a lot of branding, more so than we do ad campaigns, um, although we do love doing ad campaigns. Um, but because we do a lot of branding, we meet with the C-suite of these health systems, and we really do get to know what makes them tick and what their trips and triggers are. Uh, and because of that, we've, we've kind of formed this strategy. So before we dive in, I want to talk a little bit about why it's so important to think differently when presenting to the C-suite. For all marketing leaders across all industries, uh, today's waters are murky. There's more pressure on marketing uh, than ever before and more accountability, regardless of industry. Uh, research that was done by Forrester and Accenture uh, and again, across industry, not healthcare, not hospital specific, 80% of CSO, CEOs are dissatisfied with their chief marketing officers. 75% of CEOs doubt their chief marketing officer is impacting customer acquisition and ROI. Only 20% of organizations are fully able to measure marketing's contribution to revenue. But 80% of the CMOs out there are, are asking for more money every year. So there's a disconnect here. And, and really, it, it breeds that need to think and present differently to your C-suite. So add in the challenges in this room, in, in the healthcare world, um, constant merger and acquisition. And you've got to deal with that in both internally and externally. Higher than usual C-suite turnover. Uh, I was talking to someone yesterday, and you know one of the trends we're seeing is you've got the, whether it's a hospital or a health system, you've you know got old Doc Mills was the CEO, and he's been the CEO for 50 years, and he's the nicest, gentlest man in the whole world. Uh, but he's retiring, and in comes this suit from Deloitte or from Accenture or from wherever. Game's changing. 
You know, it's it's not as touchy and feely as it used to be in healthcare. There's there's a much more business focus than ever before. Um, on top of that, you've got other factors that make your investment in marketing less than sort of a one-to-one. -one. So you've got things that are going to influence reimbursement, patient satisfaction, outcomes, all of which may take you know your projected numbers and and just send them off the table. So, no wonder today's healthcare marketers are pulling their hair out. There's a lot of pressure, it's coming at you from all angles, and this presentation really is designed to help you navigate those murky waters. So, we're gonna go through five lessons uh, that we've learned over the years. But before we get into the lessons, it's important, I think, to realize this disconnect, you know, kind of from that murky water slide uh, there's a big disconnect between what healthcare marketers are being asked to do day in and day out and, and the services that they're providing for their organization and what their CEO really needs from the marketing function. So, any of you that were at the healthcare forum in the spring might recognize this slide. I completely sold it, but I did source Nancy Duarte on the bottom. Uh, she gave a fantastic presentation, and this was a part of it. So I think it gives you a nice foundation of what your leadership needs from the organization as a whole, obviously marketing included. So if you kind of follow across the top, leadership needs to drive up revenue and profit, and I know we don't necessarily call it revenue, but you need to drive up money you need to drive up market growth, and you need to drive up engagement, whether that's the internal culture, whether that's new patient acquisition, whether that's new partnerships that you form to broaden your organization. At the same time, you need to drive down costs. You need to drive down either the time to market or the, the time it takes to see a return on that investment. You know, So you go out and you buy that super expensive cyber knife well, it's got to pay for itself. So we need to shorten the time and pace for itself. Um, and the other thing that needs to be driven down are threats. So threats, again, like, um, like uh, employee and patient satisfaction, patient leakage, patient out-migration, things like that. So these are the things we're going to talk towards today. But I will tell you as a shortcut that if what you're proposing to leadership as your marketing plan or an initiative, if it doesn't include something on this list, it's not going to fly. So, if it doesn't at first, make, make one of these fit. So, lesson one is know your role. Yes, you're the director of marketing, the vice president of marketing, marketing coordinator, it doesn't matter really what your role is, you know, realize that it needs to radically change. So to, to win the C-suite, you need to shift from marketing leadership to growth leadership. This, this is going to be kind of a consistent theme throughout. Um, I forgot that these fly up one at a time. Um, you need to redefine both your role and the role of your team within the organization to make this shift happen. And you need to make sure that the responsibilities and accountabilities you have, remember that disconnect slide, actually match up with what the C-suite needs and what the organization's strategic plan is. So as an example, uh, speaking of growth, and kind of a repositioning of the marketing function. So Coca-Cola, and you can look, go back and look this up, a couple of years ago, they fired their chief marketing officer. Uh, not sure what those circumstances were, but they replaced him with the person whose new title is chief growth officer. So, yes, uh, you know, the responsibilities still encompass brand and advertising and engagement and all the things that a typical CMO would do. Um, but the expectation of their role is right now in the title, growth. So in addition to all the other tr traditional things that a marketing person does or a marketing leader does, 
They're expected to help identify new revenue streams, to help identify new consumer segments or product segments. So again, chief growth officer is where Coca-Cola is going. The other thing you need to do to win the C-suite is let them know who you are. You know, if they think you're the brochure department down in the basement, um, that's not who you really are. You know, you're, again, you're not just doing marketing. You're very, very capable of leading growth. You're also probably the best person in the organization to lead people through this new consumer-driven economy. As, as has come up in other conversations, I'm sure, over the course of this conference, the consumer's in control. They've got everything they need in the palm of their hand to make a decision on healthcare. And you need to be immersed in this consumerism and make sure that you can help the organization navigate that. You also have to look at the entire organization. Now, I know some of you have, like literally your job title is, I'm the orthopedic service line marketing coordinator. Um, but as you think bigger and as, a, as you think down the road, you think about the whole organization. The next thing you need to do to win the C-suite is tell them what you know best. Because if you don't tell them, nobody will. I know our customers. I know how, why, and where they choose. And I know what influences them. I know them beyond their demographics. I know why they find us or don't find us relevant. I know how to be a pragmatic business person and reach across different aisles of our organization towards a common theme and a, and a common goal. I know how to motivate inspire teams and get results. And the one that's not on here is, I need to be involved in the strategic growth of this organization because my new frame of reference is Chief Growth Officer. So lesson two is, is the pitch versus the dialogue. So, you know, we've all kind of been in this meeting um, Leadership's been in a planning meeting all day long. You were supposed to go on at 2.30. It's now 6.15 in the, in the evening. You've been waiting uh, in that little room for uh, over two and a half hours. Uh, you walk in, there's, there's coffee cups everywhere. Everything's disheveled. There's, there's paper plates coming out of the trash cans. Ties are off, hairs everywhere. Um, it's quite possibly the least positive audience you could ever find to actually pitch them a marketing plan uh, or a marketing expense is what they're going to be to jump to or think. So how do you do this? You focus on the big picture um, and, and a couple of things, and, and again, kind of common themes, is that you're there to solve and present solutions that are going to lead to organizational growth. They're going to align with the strategic plan, so obviously you need to know what that strategic plan is and it is about. The other really, really important thing, and this this could take time, and uh, you know, but is paramount to your success is you're seeking an investment strategy, not approval on a marketing budget. You know, you need to reshape or refocus marketing so it's not thought of as, a, as an expense, but it's an asset that requires funding to be successful. Most of all, as, as you would to just about any audience, you know, there's, there's very little, this is what's in it for me, speaking. It's, it's all what's in it for you. So whether that's you're speaking to a consumer audience or a physician audience, uh, in this case, certainly the C-suite, you've got to focus on what's in it for them. So we're big on, on doing personas. So, you know, much like you would do a persona for a consumer target, audience. Um, I would encourage you to do a persona, ours look like this, um, for every member of your leadership team or your C-suite. 
Now, I might not suggest that you share them with them. <laughs> uh, but just like it's going to help you better target and message to a consumer often, audience, doing a persona of your C-suite is going to help you message and communicate more effectively with the members of the C-suite. So you need to understand, and, and, and the way you'll do this is by spending time with them. Um, you need to understand their vision for the organization. You need to understand their goals for this year or for this three-year period. You need to understand their strategic business initiatives or their objectives. You know, these are the three things we're going to focus on this year. Um, you need to understand their motivators and their pain points. And again, what it's going to allow you to do, just like you would take and, and, and do like a promise stated, statement to a consumer audience, you can do like a promise statement to your C-suite. So if it's the CEO, CFO, COO, for example, you can message to them with your proposal for and asking for their investment based on things that you know are keeping them up at night. So a couple of things that we pulled out, because we actually did this for a company who was looking to target hospital C-suites. Um, so a couple of things that we pulled out here. I mean, at the, at the core, they want to make sure the organization is successful, the doors stay open, that the patients are well taken care of. It almost always does start and end with quality and safety. I've, I've not had a conversation with the CEO that didn't start with quality and safety. It needs to start there uh, for a lot of reasons. But the other things that they're going to find to be exceptionally important and things that your initiatives can help solve for are going to be things like employee and patient satisfaction, certainly growth when it comes to patient acquisition, for example, helping them find and secure strategic partnerships. Um, you know, if you're the CEO or CFO, you're really looking on expanding. So whether that's adding on to your current facility, whether that's expanding your footprint uh, with strategic partners or new, you know, uh, locations that are out of the hospital, um, always looking for those new revenue streams as, as a CEO or a CFO. At the same time, sustainable cost control. So how do we treat our patients at the lowest cost possible? So and still maintain the quality and safety that we that we must as an organization because these people have put their trust in us. So. You know, this can drive a lot of decisions in terms of, you know what, you know, people are going to this other lab service, it's an independent town, they've got old equipment, I don't know that people are trusting them, maybe we should have an outside of the hospital because it'll be a much lower cost, um, you know, imaging services or lab services, um, or it could be, you know, a uh, standalone ER, or it could be uh, urgent care, certainly. So, but profitability and ROI are always going to be in there. They're always going to be in the mix. So, again, you know, you're you're kind of the expert of the consumer uh, and and how they think, what they think about your organization. So, you need to understand the statistical evidence and the financial realities that are going to go into decision making. Uh, for your organization to be able to really present a, a good positive case for your initiative. Uh, again, just like the example I gave at the beginning, get to know your CFO. Um, we find that these people can be tremendously impactful. Uh, I don't know that I've met a CFO and, and they can be, if there's a curmudgeon in the group, it's probably this person. Um, but, but not always the case. So um, there's actually a CFO of a health system we work with down in Kentucky, and we do a lot of leadership presentations, and you know whether they're in person or online. The loudest voice in the room is the CFO, which just blows me away. Um, but ultimately, he's the one that either it's a green light or it's a red light. Um, he's got the most questions. He's got the most input. But we know in working with him all these years, his trigger is if it helps us grow, thumbs up. So everything we do for that organization kind of starts with and ends with 
and it will help you grow X. You know, again, whether that's patient volume, uh, procedures, uh, return on investments of a, of a new doctor or, or piece of equipment. So get to know the CFO. So the next lesson is numbers, and, and really one of the benefits, again, of getting to know the CFO is you'll get a better understanding of what he or she factors in when considering an investment. And if you think about it, and again, as you, as you reposition marketing as an investment and not, a, not an expense, an investment in marketing isn't really all that different or needs to be part and parcel to any other investments that your organization makes. If your organization is gonna invest in a new orthopedic surgeon, well, how are they gonna get patients? If your organization buys that super expensive cyber knife, how's it gonna pay for itself? Marketing has to be part of that equation, and marketing has to be part of that investment discussion, not just the capital expenditure. So get to know numbers. I'm gonna give you a couple examples. This one is super simple, often hard to get your, your arms around sometimes. Um, but, but a couple that I'm going to give you, I, I'm just going to touch on briefly. If there's something in any of these that you're like, yeah, I can go to leadership with this, and they're going to love it. Um, dig deeper on it, learn more about it, um, but also, you know, feel free to, to admit you're not the expert. You're, you're the expert on helping the organization grow. You're the expert on getting people to make decisions and influencing people, but, you know, Leadership is the expert on the numbers. So, but look at a couple of these. This is a pretty easy ROI one, lifetime value of a patient or a customer. Um, we did a, a, a primary care campaign and um, we did put together the numbers. We found out that a new primary care patient was worth $3,000 to this organization over their, their lifetime. And that really was just factoring in the bare minimum. I'm gonna come in for a, you know my annual, and it might have a this or that. What it didn't factor in, uh, that was kind of the back pocket, but we couldn't put a number on was, you're, you're filling the top of that funnel now with more primary, patient, primary care patients that you're bringing into your system that are gonna be much more likely as they move down the funnel to choose your specialists when they need that hip replacement, when they need this, the neurosurgery, et cetera. So you'll be able to keep more people in the system, but even factoring in $3,000 a patient, you can buy a crap ton of Google ads and a crap ton of social media ads for a fraction of $3,000. So this is probably a really good ROI. Um, and it's usually a question I always ask is, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna promote your Parkinson's disease um, specialty. Okay, what is, what is a patient worth? And, and you've got to be able to find it. It's a little bit that axiom, which I always kind of bristle at, but, but I embrace more and more as time goes by, is if you can't measure it, don't do it. You've got to find a way to measure it. So another one that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, everybody knows share of market or market share. Market share is a tough one, you know, and, and in part because in the hospital world, the numbers are like a year behind um, when they come out. So you're always, you're in 2019 and you're just dealing with market share from 2018 usually. Um, so market share is, it, it's kind of a very horizontal. You know, we're looking to grow market share. So what do we do? We're gonna expand geographically or we're gonna add services that we didn't offer before. But it's a very horizontal market share. Share of wallet, and I think this actually is a metric that can help you grow faster, goes deep on each individual person. So what percentage of that person's total healthcare spend is spent with you? <coughs> and it's gonna help the organization make decisions. You know, if the organization is thinking, wow, sure are a lot of people going to the Minute Clinic at CVS for urgent care, and they're not then coming into our system, or there's a lot of people going somewhere else for urgent care. 
um, maybe we need to make it easy and bring people into our system at that level. And it's worth the investment and marketing is going to help fill the office kind of thing. But share of wallets going to really help you shape strategies when it comes to relationships and education and navigation. You know, are you making sure that you're, it's easy for someone to access your services? Are you making sure that they, once in your system, understand the depth and breadth of all of the different things you provide at your system? Um, and are you incenting them to stay? Not financially, but giving them reasons uh, from a care standpoint to stay. Are there good metrics for figuring out share wallet? Are there good metrics for figuring out share wallet? I don't know that I know that answer, other than I, you know, I understand what it is. I think the the thing that you're looking at is is trying to get your arms around how much the average person or how much this segment of people in your marketplace are spending in healthcare and then where are they spending in healthcare. So it's a lot of looking at your competition and, and some of those kinds of numbers. But like I said, this is kind of a touch on a few things and I like this one. I, I have not dug into it super deep, but if you like it, I, I would totally dig into it deeper. So, you know, bottom line, you know, you've got to speak the language of the C-suite, and numbers are the language of the C-suite. You know, so you've got to talk about some of these things in terms of, you know, profit margins or contribution margins, <laughs> customer retention or acquisition, lifetime value. But again, it all kind of goes down to ROI. You know, how can I give you the most positive return on the marketing investment that you're making? And focus on results. You know, you don't want to be the person that's going in to see leadership and they want to know how this certain campaign's performing. And then you walk in with what probably is the greatest looking analytic dashboard in the history of analytic dashboards. But if what you're showing them are above average click through rates and an X percent increase in web traffic to our, our site, they probably won't do it in front of you but you know they're thinking they want to rip that sheet of paper in half. They need results. Tell me, how many new patients did we, did we acquire because of this campaign? You know, what new revenue streams have we impacted through your campaign? Um, how have we paid for this expensive whatever through your efforts? You know, how did you help us form some new partnerships? So focus on results. It, it's got to be that black and white. And again, if you can't measure it, you, you shouldn't do it. So the next is, you know, really very foundational um, differentiation in your value proposition. Um, I, I saw another presentation where it listed different keywords from people's mission statements. Uh, I would say a good place to start in terms of differentiation is to avoid words that are just cost of entry. You know, quality and convenience, we have good doctors. I mean, these are all expected. You know, they're not going to differentiate you. We're convenient, we're close to home, is not going to differentiate you. It, it puts you at risk, if anything else, because you don't know if, if, you know, one of these larger systems is going to plop something that now is actually closer to that person's home. Um, there's also this thing, and, and I started this 20 years ago. Uh, we had a game we played that was called Buzzword Bingo. And uh, it, it's, you know, it, it's unfortunately not all that uh, uncommon that we're in our office, the radio's on, a radio spot comes on from a certain health system, and not one in particular, but a health system ad comes on the radio, and you start hearing interdisciplinary, state-of-the-art, continuum of care, you know, in addition to convenience and compassion and everything else, and by the time they get to five of those words in one spot, someone in our office will scream bingo. <laughs> so let's let's avoid those. <clears throat> so just just to touch on this this the purpose of this isn't necessarily a branding presentation, but it is really kind of close to our DNA. 
And if you don't have this foundation to build from, everything you do is going to be schizophrenic because it's going to be a one-off. It's a one-off for ortho, and it's a one-off for hospice, it's a one-off for you know the cosmetic surgeons, um, and everything looks and feels different. You need this foundation, this foundation um, that, that really focuses on how you're better uh, than your competition. Um, have a defined value proposition. I'm sure you all do, but it's not always bad to take a new look at it, see if it's still holding up. Um, and position the organization as a whole in a way that's timeless and relevant. And I'll give you an example. Uh, I think someone's here from the University of Chicago. So at the forefront of medicine has been their tagline since I've lived in Chicago for 35 years. I'm older than that. I moved here after college. Um, it's brilliant. And, and while they, over the course of the years, have wavered from it a little bit or walked back a little bit from it, it it's still there. And, and you hear it, and it really says a lot about their organization. So in terms of positioning, you know, and, and in terms of positioning your entire organization, look at it through the lens of your audiences. You know, don't look at it through well, our CEO says we're this, you know, or our COO or our chief medical officer says we're this. You got to look at it through the lens of your audience and test it with your audiences to make sure it's actually relevant uh, and resonates with them. To make sure that it actually elevates and differentiates your organization from the other choices they have in the marketplace. It has to align with the strategic plan of the organization, and it has to help the organization grow. So there are organizations out there that are talking about themselves when they communicate with consumers. You know, it's me, me, me. We're the best, we're the biggest, we're number one in this. It's all about me talking at you. Our philosophy on this anyways, and it doesn't matter how big you are, because you know what? Mayo Clinic has a new spot, and I don't know if anyone's seen it on TV, that shows a father and a son on a journey, and it looks like they're on a road trip, and they're kind of like letting their hair down, and the kid's getting it all out, and the spot ends at the front door of the Mayo Clinic. That's not about the Mayo Clinic. That's about that kid that's going to get treated at the Mayo Clinic. It's a really, really powerful spot. So our, our thing is you've got to weave your brand around the passions and the interests of the customer. We call it giving your brand a heartbeat. And I'll give you an example of kind of an easy way to do it. So everyone's probably seen this. This is kind of the classic David Ocker from Profit. Um, you know, the sweet spot is that intersection between the customer's passions and interests and a brand's benefits. That's a really good place to, to take your position from or your value proposition from. But we think there's a sweeter spot when you layer over that cultural relevance. So what's going on in your market? What's going on with the patient population you serve? What are the issues out there? And the way that you're positioning yourself now not only addresses what's important to them and what you do really well, but these cultural issues that really will get at that heartbeat of a message. So if I can do this right, I'm going to show you a spot uh, that, that I think is a really good heartbeat message spot from a pretty unlikely source. Do. Do your thing. Keep that stuff. Flee that nest. Realize. Fulfill. Run. Go walk. Love. Not like, drive, keep driving, be inspired, curious, 
be extraordinary. Turn off the highway and soar. company can do this, imagine what an organization that actually heals people can do. You can do this kind of spot, and it's going to resonate in your, in your marketplace, and it's going to make people think very differently about your organization. You know, it's not about this latest piece of equipment or technology that nobody's ever heard of. It's about feeling alive, if you could possibly steal their line. So, lesson five is answer the tough questions. So again, we, this, this is sort of a recap. Um, be prepared, you know, when you're gonna engage the C-suite, you will have done your homework. Um, both of us will figure out what share of wallet actually is and how, I know what it is, but how to measure it. Um, so you'll, do, you'll have done your homework, you'll have met with different members of the leadership team over the course of time to figure out what makes them tick and what their vision is and how they measure uh, making investments in, in various things for the system. Um, but again, you'll understand them, you know, whether you do a persona of them or not, you'll understand, you know, what their soft spot is or, or how you're gonna get them to say yes, you know, like the CFO, that if it helps you grow, it's a yes. So know your audience, understand the numbers, and understand that you know, you're not just selling, uh, you're consulting, and again, you're there and you're positioning yourself as the person who's gonna help this organization grow. And anticipate the tough questions, I didn't anticipate that one. Um, <laughs> and rehearse, which is always fun. So in summary, there's a couple of takeaways. And then a couple of things I think you can bring back to your organizations. Again, not all of these are gonna fit everyone, uh, but I'm hoping that, that, that you'll grab onto a couple of these and go, okay, I, I can reshape myself, I can reshape my department, and you know what? We can, we can help this organization grow, and they need my help. So in terms of takeaways, you know, again, Expectations of marketing have changed. You know, this isn't just in healthcare. You know, you're, you're not going to be the brochure department forever or the I need a billboard with this on it from a doctor department. Um, you, have to, you have to make that shift and you have to reflect the growth goals uh, of the organization and work with leadership to help grow and help acquire new patients, et cetera. Uh, knowing key definitions of, and performance metrics are going to help with that success. If you can walk in and show them numbers, you can show it to them on paper, that here's the investment that we require to make this happen. This is what I think we'll achieve, and this is what it means to the organization. You're going to get a green light much more often. As we just went through, a relevant brand position and differentiation is, is really gonna give you that, that underlying framework or that foundation of success that you can build off of. You know, you need to have the one position and then you certainly can do different campaigns for different service lines or different um, programs or products, but they all have to come out of the same place. We used to, and a creative director used to say, it needs to look like it came out of the same pen. Uh, again, don't pitch the C-suite. You're not an expense. Don't pitch them. It's, it's much more of a consultation. It's much more um, having conversations with them and finding out, again, what makes them tick. Uh, make allies with your C-suite colleagues. It, it, it's probably not the easiest thing in the world, depending on, on where you are in the organization to make an appointment with the CFO, but that's really your goal. Um, and, and even if you're the, the 25 year old, you know, go-getter that, that just is new to the organization, you know, you've got a boss, 
uh, work through whatever your level uh, of reporting is to get to that person. And I don't think there's a CFO or a CEO out there uh, that wouldn't want to spend some time with a 25-year-old who's really excited about how to help this organization. Uh, they will help, and, and they will. It, it, it's it's almost like the uh, you know the Jerry Maguire help me help you kind of thing. And you want to turn your marketing department into the growth department. So there's a couple of uh, sheets of paper that were handed around. Uh, one of them is an article. Uh, that was in, I believe it's Spectrum Magazine, which is, which is Shushman's publication. Uh, it's really the article that this presentation kind of came from. Uh, so, so that's another resource that you certainly can read through. There's also this checklist, and again, I, I would encourage everyone to embrace this notion of, you know, I'm no longer the marketing director, I'm no longer whatever my title is. I either am now or I will be the chief growth officer. So to be able to be the chief, chief growth officer, your leadership needs to understand that you must understand what the strategic plan is and what the organization's growth goals are. You have to understand the programmatic, the partnership, the geographic and audience priorities of the organization. You have to understand where the revenue is coming from. Most organizations are pretty good about all of these things, but so are. And it's hard to do your job if you don't know which, which services or programs or service lines are really driving revenue for the organization. You've got to understand the language of the C-suite, so understand numbers, uh, and you have to understand how your success is going to be measured. So any good checklist for yourself I think should include a checklist for others. Uh, and these are things that, that you need to make sure that your leadership understands. Your leadership needs to understand that marketing is an investment. It's an investment that will lead to acquisition, patient acquisition, et cetera, uh, retention, uh, satisfaction. Uh, these, are the, these are the outcomes of the investment that you're making in marketing. Um, Leadership needs to understand that you're critical to driving organizational success. And leadership needs to understand that you need a seat at the strategic planning table. I'll leave you with this. You've got this. No one knows the marketplace better than you do. No one knows your customer better than you do. No one knows what is the strength and the differentiators of your organization better than you do, and no one knows how to communicate and get results better than you do. Thank you.